This last spring, we did these uh, events called unconferences. They're absolutely the opposite of what's happening here. There was no speakers, there were no bands, there were no lights, there wasn't even a program or an agenda. I woke up every morning and showed up at a church just praying that people would show up to nothing and then create something. And sure enough, we had youth pastors um, that, would, that, that came and youth ministers and youth workers and volunteers that showed up just because we knew we needed to get together and talk about what was going on in youth ministry. And we had probably 1,000 people that participated in these 13 different unconferences around the country. Some of you may have even participated in one or two of them. And together we sat down and we just said, what do we need to learn, share, or create so that we can help students find and follow Jesus? We kind of made an agenda, and then we just had conversations all day. It was awesome. But when I was looking at the whole of the experience over those 13 uh, experiences, and we'll do more of them uh, this spring, um, one of the things that I got real heavy on my heart was this the sense that youth ministry feels like it's a little bit under attack. That we feel that, you know, whether it be the family ministry movement or intergenerational ministry, people are starting to question, is youth ministry valuable anymore? And we start feeling that way. And we, we kind of started out on this journey with excitement, with enthusiasm, with adventure to finish this task. And then all of a sudden we ask ourselves, Am I going in the right direction? Did I invest in, in the right way? And, and so during this time, I spent a lot of time by myself, and I just started thinking about why the church needs youth ministry. I mean, several thousand years ago, Jesus called a group of teenagers together, and literally, he used them to help spread his message and literally change culture, change the world, change life as we know it to this very day. Even people that, that aren't following Jesus are benefiting from the work of the gospel set loose on this earth. And he started with a group of teenagers. And, and it's pretty remarkable when you think about it. And, and ever since then, I believe that it's been the youth in our churches that help us to continue to push that envelope, to keep us from becoming stagnant and stale in what it is that we're doing and what it is that we're about. And right now in our culture, we are experiencing change on levels we have not seen in a very long time. Not just changes about color or shape or music, uh, but deep structural change about the way we even see and think about who we are as people and, and what truth is. And, and more than ever, I think that the church needs youth ministry. And so I want to share with you five kind of um, things that I've thought about and things that we need to ask ourselves as youth ministers. Am I doing this in my church? Am I working toward this to help our church through my efforts as a youth minister? I want to share them with you now and we'll tell you later how you can get these five points if you'd like to, to look at them and meditate on them later. But the first one is this. Youth ministry is vital to helping teens integrate into the larger intergenerational community of the church. This used to happen naturally, but in our fractured world that we're living in, they need advocates. And the idea that youth ministers can go away and teenagers are going to be able to integrate into the larger intergenerational community of the church, I think is unproven and at best a false dream or hope. They need advocates that can really help bring them into the larger, not be two separate churches, but bring them into the intergenerational experience of the church. Youth ministry is vital to helping that happen. The second thing is that youth ministry resists the status quo, helping the church stay relevant in a changing culture. Teenagers may not have all the answers, but they definitely raise the questions. And they bring the questions about what really matters to being Jesus in this world. The church needs that voice. The church needs to hear those questions, to wrestle with them and not silence them so that they can stay relevant in a changing world and that the gospel of Jesus Christ remains relevant. The third thing. Youth ministry focuses on inviting those who are not already part of the church into the deeper narrative of God's plan for humankind. If you take a look at all the different ministries in a church and you look at all the different research that's been done, you see that youth ministry is really instrumental in reaching those who don't know Jesus and helping them understand who he is. And it reminds the church that we have to be a light into the dark places of life, that the gospel is here to redeem and rescue mankind. And the, the youth ministry seems to be where the energy comes from in a lot of faith communities. 
The fourth thing, and this one is really significant and it's kind of worded, wordy because I, I got kind of crazy on it, but hang in there and, and think about this because I think it's big. Youth ministry reminds the church that teens are not marginalized members of the body, but co-creators and conspirators in the divine work of the church, restoring life on earth as it is in heaven. Think about this for a moment. There is no other place in, in, in our social world where teenagers have equal footing as an adult because the Holy Spirit is the equalizer. They are a vital member of a body. They are not marginalized because of their age or their stage of life. They are a part of the body. And the Apostle Paul reminds us that all parts are necessary and essential for its survival. How are we doing as youth workers advocating for this in our churches, that our teenagers aren't just doing their little nice thing on the side, but are literally co-conspirators in the exciting work of the gospel, helping to restore and redeem the earth in the name of Jesus Christ. There's no other place on the earth where this happens or could happen than the church. It's not happening enough. We need to elevate that. And then the last thing, Youth ministry helps the church focus on the way of Jesus, which goes beyond tradition, dogma, and ritual. As institutions age and get older, they tend to become more formal in the way that they operate. And they tend to sometimes forget the way of Jesus. We have to remember the Pharisees and Jesus, they both held a similar position on adultery, didn't they? They both hated it and despised it. But the way they treated the adulterer was very different. One held stones in their hand, the other offered forgiveness and a path toward wholeness and humanness. Why? Because the way of Jesus is sometimes very different than just the dogma of Jesus. And that's really important because teenagers help us remember that, who Jesus is. So this is what YS is all about. This is what we believe about youth ministry. Ever since you specialty started out of Wayne Rice and, and Mike Iaconelli's garages some 40 some years ago, it never was about resources, it never was about an event. It was about a movement that lifted up Jesus and celebrated the life that Jesus offered adolescents, teenagers in their daily life. We're a movement. And if you wanna help us learn, share, and create together, then you are one of us. And we invite you to join us on the ministry onward because together we can do this for the glory of God.